And now we'll open the uh, floor for questions from the audience. You can direct your question to a particular candidate or to every candidate. And if anyone uh, wants to add their thoughts on the question, feel free to uh, take it. Uh, we'll start with this. Hi, my name is Peter Astor. I, I live uh, not in this part of the uh, town. I live up uh, on the other side of the tract. Uh, and I've always wondered about the police station. And we talked about rate bulls. I know and you, Ms. Larry, had said, Oh, obviously you can't use it for senior citizen housing. I, I'm not familiar why you can't use it for senior citizen housing. It seems to be it's a commercial enterprise that supports uh, that would probably be a high rateable as well. But I just generally, and I think all three of you would be great if you could answer, why can't we have a rateable that has more substance and get, has pays more taxes in that particular area than just a, apartments? Um. Interesting, in talking to people, um, and I, like I said, I've talked to, to about a thousand different home, home owners. Um, the, the Maplewood Village is changing. The, the post office, once upon a time, was the anchor. That was why people went to the village. It's changed. The, the village, the vibe of the village has changed. It's younger. There are more restaurants. There are more bars. There are, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a situation where I believe if we were to get a state-of-the-art apartment complex, we can do very well in generating high-end units that people are going to come and want to live in. That's my. That's what I'm looking at. I think that would be a great addition to the village where it is. The restaurants are going to overflow with, with these young professionals who go out, they eat all the time, they obviously are going to have drinks. Uh, they're going to turn the village into a little bit of a different situation where you have um, um, a, a youthful, youthful type of uh, Lifestyle, and and I think that is going to be a draw. That's the future. The the anchor of the village is now the restaurants, the bars, and so forth. And, and that, that's what I'm thinking about. Someone else? I will answer. Um, I would say that what Mr. La Navlin has said is correct, in that the people that you get in that in the, an apartment complex there would certainly support the village. The the rateable that you would get there, I. I don't know. I might have to go out and do some more uh, investigation, but I don't believe that, a, that the rateable that you would get in that space alone would be enough to offset taxes enough. And I think it would, it would certainly change the, the whole character of the area. I think it needs to be more residential. I do also believe it needs to be affordable residential because I think that's a need in the township. The, the, um Two ways I'll answer that. One, with senior housing, uh, you generally have to subsidize that, either give the land or uh, give a tax break in order to make that I sufficient. I mean senior okay. housing in the traditional way. Okay. The, the kind that you see, uh, the assisted living type. Yeah, we've, looked at, the commercial we've looked at that and we've talked to people about that. The, the problem you have there is the space. It's a one acre site. It just doesn't work. It's a very small site. So um, the other thing is that, so that won't work. So we're looking at this and, and quite honestly, what we're looking at is a high-end residential residential units where people are going to be paying, you know, close to two thousand dollars a month to live. So it's uh, it's going to bring back a sizable rateable. But just to put this into perspective, so we understand, just to have a one percent impact on the taxes, one percent, which is a fairly modest goal, you need thirty-three million dollars in new rateables. That's a lot of money. Now we might get half of that at the police station. We might get half of it on another project. We're going to get it on the project next door. At uh, we're building, and the developers building units next door. But it's cobbling together these small pieces of of, of uh, development that's going to change it. And it's not you know there's, uh, unless we do paving over, like it sounds like he wants to do, we're not going to be in a position to grow our way out of it. It's one strategy. It's not the only strategy. You've got to hold down the cost. You've got to do some growing on the rateables. We got to share some services, and that's how we're going to put it together. And we have to go talk to Governor Christie and get him to change his policies and give us some more money. Another question? Yes. This yeah. Time. Uh, Joe Strauss, I'm a blogger, and I've also lived in ELSP for ten years. Um, I think we can all agree that the Township Committee has done as much as it can do to keep taxes low and to share services, have no tax increase this year 
do a lot to cut costs. But isn't it true that because of the situation that Maplewood is in, in that we have very little developmental land, we have very few rateables, and the, much of the taxes are from the schools, can the Township Committee really do anything more to effectively either stave off big tax increases or even lower them, which of course I think most people realize is never going to happen. And even if you don't raise them a lot, we still have a huge tax rate that the mayor and I whine about all the time. Can the Township Committee really do that much that they haven't already done? And I guess I asked the mayor first to, to answer that and then the other. Well, yeah, I think we have uh, a couple things happening here. Yeah, we now have a 2% cap. But even in a 2% cap, there's a lot of flexibility. Quite honestly, we could have increased it by about 8% this year. So I think it takes a, a responsible township committee to commit to keeping it at that 2% and not use all those exemptions to, to continue to raise it uh, astronomically. Second, we have uh, our role as a board of school estimate member. I think there we have to work with the school board. You know, that's a 2% increase there too. And they have some of those same exclusions. And we need to get a culture there that they're going to stick to a 2% cap. Uh, and then I think we have the bully pulpit. We need to be down in Trenton telling the governor, telling the legislature that the decisions they make, that, that they are making, are hurting Maplewood. To cut our school budget that much, to take back that money that they did that when he first came in and just took it all back, to cut our municipal aid, those are the wrong decisions in Trenton and we need to be down there telling them. I'm on the board of the New Jersey Conference of Mayors and that's what I told him directly. And it wasn't an easy discussion. First of all, we're both Mets fans. So that's the one thing. But, but more importantly, you know, he's a, he's a very imposing figure. But I, I told him what I thought was wrong. And I think we have to continue to tell them what's wrong. And then it's those things that are right. But we have to use our ability as elected officials to work down there with our colleagues across the state to try to get those, change, those changes in trend. Someone else want to speak? I would agree with, with Vic that yes, we actually have to make sure that we have keep a, have and keep a voice and make sure it's a loud and long voice. Um, but you're saying, obviously, we're doing some things that are good. Is there any more we can do? I believe that, that, that we, if we continue what we're doing, things will get better. There's a lot more we can do with shared services. Um, you've heard some ideas here tonight. If we, with the fire department, <clears throat> excuse me, you can save a lot of money if you combine the fire departments or if you do shared services with the fire department. Um, I think that's the best way to continue what we're doing. So, yes, there's more we can do. Yeah, I mean, basically, look, and I agree with, uh, with Vic when we talk about uh, we, we would love it if Trenton listened to us. We would love it if Essex County listened to us. We would love it if they would come and help us. I, I, I met uh, at a breakfast uh, Joe D, the Essex County executive. Essex County has $38 million right now in surplus. I said, well, we need some of that. We're in trouble here in Maplewood. He said, well, we're saving for a rainy day. <laughs> well, it's a rainy day right now in Maplewood. You know, but, but, so, so really, yeah, we have to continue the process of, of working with the county, working with the state, and hitting them up and in a marketing plan to let them know that you know we need help. But ultimately, we have to help ourselves, as I said in the opening statement. So when we have opportunities, like the police station, like the post office, to create something, to create a rateable, we have to get it right. We haven't gotten the police station right. I believe everyone here is in agreement. Uh, we didn't do our due diligence. Half a million dollars in cleanup. It was more than just asbestos, Mayor. It was actually that there was lead in the basement from an old shooting range. They had a shooting gallery down there. Uh, you had tanks in the soil. So, so it's been more than that. It was just an absolutely, we just, we just, we had 12 developers. The market crashed. Then we spent a year with an exclusively, exclusively negotiating with one developer who ended up walking away from the project. So here we are spending another half a million dollars, and we're bonding, we're, you know, we're floating bonds, and, and, and that's basically how we operate here in Maplewood. That has to stop in long term, and again, as I said in my opening statement, shared services is ultimately where we need to focus on. We need a game plan that's going to encompass police, it's going to encompass fire, government, because, again, 10 years from now, it, we can, we, unless we get a better governor there in Trenton, and, and there's no guarantee that's going to happen, we got to do it ourselves, and, and we have a chance now. We do have a chance, but we have to really work on it. Another question? Gentlemen in the back. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank every, all three of you for 
being willing to put their selves on the line to the community. I think it's really an admirable thing. Um, well, you know, you know the uh, you know what it's like. So. <laughs> a lot of um, attention and time has been put forth about shared services as well as should be. What I'd like to know from each of the candidates is what is the desirability, feasibility, probability of actually merging the two towns, and what is your opinion on that possibility? The two towns being Maplewood and South Orange. Look, the small municipality is going to be extinct eventually in New Jersey. Maplewood, South Orange, these are small towns. They can't survive on their own with no ability to build a mall or rateables or we don't have room 10, we don't have room 22. So, so basically, is it feasible? It has to be feasible. We have no choice and it's something we're going to have to work on every day, probably with South Orange because the two, team, two uh, towns do need to merge police, they do need to merge fire. As I said before, two tax collectors, two tax assessors, it goes on and on and on. And, and, and we need to basically, we need to remove the duplicate services that the two towns provide. It needs to become one, we need to cut costs. So to answer your question, shared services, yeah, it, it's, it's gonna happen. And I would like to see Maplewood take the lead in the state in being one of the first towns to take it from A to Z. Yeah. Um, I would be open to it. Uh, I wasn't open to it last time, and I'll tell you why. First of all, I think it was, there were, there was a hoax being played on people. Uh, there was this discussion of shared services, and that was what was going on. I think there really was an agenda to talk about a merger. So I think if we're talking about a merger, it should be transparent, upfront. There should be a lot of discussion on both sides. I'd be open to having that conversation. I'll tell you the difficulty, though, I think, in merging with South Orange is we're too similar. We both suffer from high residential property taxes with uh, fully built up communities um, and not being able to, to mesh. I would not suggest this, but it would make more sense to merge with Milburn because of Milburn's um, high rateables out on the highway and the malls and all that. We would get the, the combination there. I, uh, to be honest, I don't think Milburn's interested. <laughs> um, so I think, um, I think that, you know, at some point we're going to get to, uh, I, I already, I happen to think that we're at A and Z, A to Z on shared services. we got more to do. We're maybe A to M, um, and we got more to go. And uh, as we do, we're going to develop different relationships with South Orange. We're going to look at other ways that we can uh, have economy of scale and, and uh, see where we might be able to eliminate positions. Uh, and it might eventually end up where it makes sense to merge. I'd be open to having that conversation. I think it's a little bit down the road. It's interesting because I just had this conversation with a friend of mine. And I was not in favor of merging the two towns. I Mostly because of the reasons that Vic stated. That we, we, we don't bring, neither one of them brings what is needed. So we need to, I think, keep our own character, keep our own township, but absolutely work together, share the services, um, pool the resources. I think we are two distinct towns, but we are very much alike, but we have our own little personalities. And I think we should keep it that way. I'd like to add just one, one quick point on this. Regarding shared services, and, and, and from a marketing point of view, we have a state-of-the-art police station right now in Springfield Avenue, one of the nicest stations in the state. For $26 million, it better be. But the bottom line is we do have something to offer other towns. Perhaps it's something we could offer Milburn. We have a station that works for both towns. We can merge our police. So that, so, so that I, I agree with the mayor when he says that it would be great if we could do something with Milburn. Perhaps we can. Do we have another question? Yes. 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 Thanks, two quick questions. One for Victor, one for Lee. On the question to, to the mayor, um, when you talked earlier about the zero tax increase on the average, your own financial advisors, your paid staff, kind of cautioned against that and also also warned about the borrowing. Um, in your opinion, in, in, your, in your second go around, is the township doing a good job managing the finances? <coughs> Quick question to Lee is you and Vic have butted heads to this debate. Um, if you're in the township committee, could you work with them? Would you work with them? And in what areas? Let me just 
to find out the format because you've allowed a, yes, a yes. rebuttal of, yes. of, are we all going to be allowed to have seconds? I think we'll have, I didn't, it happened so fast. Okay. That, you know, <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I think, you know, the, we're in different roles. Uh, the Township Committee and the Administrator, the Administrator and CFO. They are, um, um, you know, they, they're looking for as much uh, flexibility on the budget as possible because of uh, their decision making that they have to, to, uh, to do going forward. Our decision though was to bring in a budget with as low a tax rate as possible and we did that. Our goal was to have a zero tax increase for the average homeowner. We met that goal. I don't know how you can do any better than that. Um, and unless you do it lower taxes, and I'm the only one up here who voted once to lower taxes on the Township Committee back in the 90s. So um, that's, that's what we did. I don't think there's any, I think it's just a different way that we were looking at the budget. We said to the, uh, to the administrator, we asked him, can you make this work? He gave us three scenarios in the end. He, he recommended this scenario as the best of the three. The others uh, actually um, would have been less of an increase. And we said, okay, this makes sense to us. It gives us the flexibility to go forward. So uh, I don't think there was any big issue. On the, on the spending, on the, the debt, um, <laughs> they were pushing us to keep the debt at where we did, and that was flat year to year, not to go in, to increase the debt, to only increase the debt the amount that we were retiring debt. That's what we did. Do you want to add anything? <coughs> any other questions? Well, I think he wanted me to answer. Oh. Uh, Right, it was a two-part question. Um, you're stealing my thunder a little bit, my closing statement, but to answer your question, yes, I can work with Vic. Uh, look, Ian Grodman is here, Kent Pettis is here, Kathy Leventhal is here. They ran against Vic, and that was, and for people who remember the history here, that, those were some ugly times. Those were some heated debates. Uh, it, was, uh, it, it, was, it was something else. They're all working together. In the end, smart people can work together because smart people want to make the right decision. Yes, I could work with the mayor, but I will not be a rubber stamp. Well, you know, that's, that's so ridiculous. First of all, no one's looking for a rubber stamp. I think Lee wants to be the, the candidate of no. He's sort of like the Republicans in Washington and Trenton. They want, they're the party of no. I mean, this is not about coming in with an attitude that I'm going to instinctively be against any one particular member. The goal of five people, the goal of the beauty of our system of government, is that we're a committee. We work together. We're all equal. The mayor just happens to have a little bit more responsibility than the others. But the beauty here is that we have to hammer out a compromise. The, the magic number is three. If you can get three votes, you can make things happen. So you work with your, cal your colleagues to get those three. But the, the real goal is to get five. I don't, I don't ever apologize for getting five votes, because that means that everybody was heard, that everybody's opinions we're vetted, and we put together a common platform and a common position to go forward that we could all stand behind. There would have been no way we could have done the budget rebalancing that we did a couple of years ago if it was three to two or four to one. So we had to work and we had to shape it and get five votes in support of it. So if he wants to come on here as to be the no man, that's the wrong attitude. We're not looking for a yes man or woman or a no man or woman. We're looking for somebody who is going to ask the questions and want to be part of the process of coming and forming a united front and making the best decisions for the town. Any other questions? I do. Yes. If I can get it formatted, it's sort of in my head. Um, I'm wondering, because I'm just sitting here thinking about everything I'm hearing tonight in general. Um, I too am concerned about property taxes. I want to live here a long time. But they also realize in this town, I grew up in the state of Kentucky, we get so much for our property taxes in this town, we have no idea. When I say to people, they pick my leaves up at the curb, they go, what? Are you crazy? I have to pay for that. Or I have to haul it off somewhere. My mother-in-law lives in a beautiful section in Litchfield County, Connecticut. She has to drive to take her garbage where she lives. And I will say where she lives is all wealthy Manhattanites. And they're all hiring somebody to drive the garbage. <laughs> so I love living in Maplewood, but sometimes I hear way too much complaining and a little bit of entitlement. I think we need to hear a lot more gratitude for what is being done in this town and for how much we do get from this town. I am concerned 
about being able to live in my house until I retire. But I also realized I'm taking a jiffy at the end of my block. I'm going to Manhattan every day to work. I have a nice, convenient way of life. Do you, Three have, Kevin, do you have a question? Oh, my question was. <laughs> are the neighborhood associations. If you have a good, strong neighborhood association, for instance, Hilton is very active. You see them, that, that you guys are all here. You're finding out what's going on. You're making your voices known. We need neighborhood associations across the township that's going to do that. And if you rev up the neighborhood associations, you rev up the residents. And you get the residents revved up, and they're gonna start talking, they're gonna start yelling, they're gonna start getting their voice out there. So I think that's, that's how you do it. Lee? Uh, what's your name? Kathy Easton. Kathy, I think I put you in charge of, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> of, of, of what you're asking I'm about. But, 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 um, <laughs> but yeah, certainly you yeah, have to look. Uh, I, I agree, I agree 100%. Uh, with, uh, India is saying, and um, yeah, uh, we, we as a community, we have smart people here. We have very smart people. We need to reach out to the community. We need to reach out to the, 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 the lawyers and and, uh, and the accountants and some of the brighter people that we have at Maple. Say, here's our issue. We need the brightest minds. We need to figure out an action plan. We need to approach Trenton, and when we do approach Trenton, we better be prepared to tell them what we want. Um, yeah. So, so to answer your question, sure, activism. That's a good thing. Um, Maplewood being heard, that's a good thing. We have smart people that would probably be willing to step up and do it and, and be a part of that. And again, that, that's a good thing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we need to do that. Yeah, um, I, I absolutely agree. We need to be down in Trenton. We need to be challenging the governor. I happen to disagree with the governor. I know Lee blogged a while back that, uh, I just read it here, he's very proud of, of my state for electing Chris Christie. I guess we have difference of opinion. He supports Chris Christie, I don't. I think we gotta go out there and challenge Chris Christie because I think his policies are wrong for, for Maplewood and, and for New Jersey. I do agree with you that I think when you sit people down and you talk to them about the totality of the town, yeah, the taxes, the services, I think they feel pretty comfortable about where they live. They like their neighborhoods, they like the people they live with, they like the parks, they like the libraries, including the Hilton Library. So uh, I think that those are all the pluses that we have to build on, and that's something that I think is, a, it's, it's hard to measure. It's easy to go out there and talk about, you know, taxes, 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 but it's the next question. If not, what are we, ta what are we talking about? Giving up, closing down, changing? Right. What things do you want out of your life? And I think that's important to, to get up there. It's a, it's a similar conversation to have with you. Okay, yes. Yeah, uh, my question is pretty good, Um I've heard a lot of concern about property. level of solutions and problems. I don't really, I wonder if you can give me a clear reason why you're running. I don't really hear a different idea or what you think has been done wrong. Well, if you were here for my opening statement, Wayne, I think um, I'm running because of property taxes. I'm running because our property taxes are out of control and people are hurting. That's the reason I threw my hat into the ring because I think we need to focus on that. Now, there's a two-step plan here to halt the progression, the, 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 the yearly tax hikes, be it on the municipality level or the school level. I think you did vote to increase the school tax levy this year. I would have done the same thing, but the bottom line is, is that I am running because we need to figure out short-term a way to stop the bleeding and then long-term how to hopefully reduce it. Short-term, we have these rateable opportunities. We have 
the post office, we have the police station. We need to concentrate on doing what we can when we have the opportunity. Can't blow it. And secondly, it's about shared services. We need to be the leader in the state in figuring out an action plan that will reduce our cost of doing business. That is the only answer. We can talk about Trenton and hopefully, hopefully by, by, by the grace of God, Trenton listens. But in the interim, we need smart people making the best decisions that they can about how short term, when I talk about short term, five years. Long term, I'm talking about 10 years. That's what we need to do regarding property taxes, figure out a way. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. 20 years from now, people are still gonna be complaining about property taxes and maybe even if we do manage to get it under control. But at least we would have managed to get it under control. And that's why I'm running and that's the things I wanna look into and that's my plan, to be a leader in that, in that discussion. If I may, that's, none of that is new. Well, you can't reinvent the wheel, Wayne. I mean, basically, you know. I'm looking for a reason. How, are, we, are we sharing services with, with South Orange regarding our police? Are we sharing services with our firefighters, as, as, as the mayor has mentioned that he'd like to do? Are we sharing services with our gover uh, with governments? We're not doing that. We're doing it in small doses. We need to do it in large doses. We need to, we need to, we need to absolutely make this our mandate. And that is, that's the key. I mean, it's just, if, if, some, now, if somebody, in, in, including yourself, said, hey, I got a better idea, I'd be happy to listen to it. I mean, you know, nothing is written in stone, but ultimately, we need to take shared services seriously. It's, it's the central issue that small municipalities like Maplewood face. If they can't figure out a way to make that happen, if they can't figure out a way to reduce the costs associated with police, with fire, with government, we're in trouble. We're in serious trouble. And as I said during my opening statement, what happens? The property taxes continue to rise because we have to do business. The homes reduce in value. And then nobody can sell their home because the taxes are too high. So, so this is a legitimate issue. So what's the answer? The answer is we need to focus on shared services long term. That needs to be the centerpiece of Maplewood's future. Absolute. Does anyone want to I think we are working on shared services. I don't know that you just willy-nilly go out and combine everything. You have to do it in small doses. You can't just say, okay, we're going to take two organizations that have been here for years and smush them together. It takes more than that. It takes planning. It takes the right people in charge. It takes getting the, the buy-in of the people that you're smushing together. So I would say, yes, long term, this is going to help us. This, is, this may even save us. However, you can't just do it. You have to plan it. You have to negotiate it. And that's what we need to make sure we do. And do it properly and not blow it. Hey, I'm going to um, move on to the, the oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, just, I wanted to just say, um, you know, it sounds like um, you're supportive of our shared service agenda because it's actually happening. But let me, let me talk about the fire department. Because it is a tough one. Um, just inherent problems. South Orange is civil service, Maplewood's not. Prevents, prevents a problem right there. Two different unions, got to work that out. Different, up until just a couple of weeks ago, two different ranks. We had deputy chiefs and, and battalion chiefs and captains. They had captains and lieutenants. So we had to work all that out. But more importantly, you know, when we did the courts, Hopefully no one in this room has to use the Violations Bureau or use the courts. So it was a little easier when we went out and talked to people that were going to merge the Violations Bureau and merge the court. People said, okay. But when we start talking about fire or police, then each one of you has to be sure that the decision that we make is going to protect your lives and your property. That's a big decision to make. So we have to do it in a very deliberate fashion. We have to get the community buy-in from the beginning. And that's taking some time. And so we are, and we've told South Orange, and I'd be the first to tell you, and my colleagues know, that I run out, I get impatient because we're not moving fast enough. And on some of these deals, we walk away from the table and we come back and say, okay, let's work this out. But on these big issues, we're going to go at a pace where the community feels comfortable. That's the air conditioner. Yeah, it's just uh, one of the things we have to fix in this. <laughs> but uh, 
we're going to make sure that if we do these big things, if we talk about police services, fire services, that you are going to be protected and you're going to feel comfortable and you're going to walk with us as we mer as we merge these uh, these services. I think it's time now for our closing statement. And, uh, I'm sure that our candidates will be here afterwards if you still have a pressing matter that you want to speak to with them individually. So in, according to my little chart here, it was Vic's turn to speak. Okay. So. I, then I, I opened up. Yeah, oh, I was just going by. Are you going to closing first? Opening yeah. and closing first. Okay. Well, it's just your turn. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Um, well, thanks again for coming out this evening. It's, uh, it's very important that uh, you participate. And uh, as we go door to door and speak to people and we stand around town, um, we're finding out a lot about folks. I, I, I actually like that we're in an election. Uh, my wife doesn't, but I do. Um, uh, it, it gives me an opportunity to be out there. It kind of uh, uh, allows me some, uh, some permission, I guess, to, to knock on doors and talk to folks. And, and they, they want to hear what's going on. Um, you know, this is, this is about the future. This is, this is not about what we're afraid of. This is about what we're hoping for. You know, maybe Lee's worked at Fox News too much, because all he's talking about is the fear. But I want to talk about the hope. You know, I walked from the train today to town hall to go to my office hours, and I saw hundreds of kids out there in the park playing, a park that that is better looking now because we've privatized the service in a shared service with South Orange and the school board to cut the grass and keep up the, the look. I'm talking to people on the train about their, I'm listening to stories about what they're doing, what they're going to hear concerts, they're bringing kids to the dance schools. They have hopes for their kids for the future. That's what this election is about. Yes, property taxes are horrendous. You're not going to get any argument from me to the contrary. But we're working on it, and I think we've demonstrated last year and two, two years ago, last year and this year, that we're getting it under control and we're making a difference. You can't do better than a zero. You can't do better than a zero and not close any services, not lay anybody off, not furlough anybody. So I think we are on the right track. And let me just say one other thing, because it was brought up about this, uh, this phantom uh, I don't, I, maybe you weren't even in the room, so I don't know how you know this. But this development, this developer on uh, with the Donnell Road thing, they didn't walk away. We said to them, no. Because the developer wanted to, to put up as little as he could and get all the gains, and it became apparent to us that he was playing us and going to flip us, flip the property and make more money. And we said, that's not what we're going to do. You're going to take a walk, and we're going to get a new developer that we can work with. So the, we didn't lose any process. This is just moving forward. We're getting better plans now, better money now than before, and we're going to move forward and get that project done sooner than you think. India? Well, I'd like to thank Hilton Neighborhood Association once again for inviting us here. Um, this, is, this is a great event, and I really am pleased and, and honored to be here. I've given you my views on some of the issues that we face. I'm definitely committed to shared services. I'm committed to strong neighborhood associations that will make and keep our streets safe. I'm committed to programming for uh, programming and housing for our seniors. Vic and I have walked and talked throughout this neighborhood to different people. Um, I think we understand what some of their needs are, what some of their wants are. The Democratic Committee has endorsed us, and they believe that we will be good for this town. And so I'm going to ask you to vote for Vic, to vote for me on June 7th. I've seen and touched lives as a part of the Maplewood First Aid Squad. I've been involved in this township between the Community Coalition on Race and my own neighborhood association. I've been involved since I've been here. I'm working, even as we speak, through some of these issues on our neighborhood association. So I think I can certainly do it on a township basis. And I ask for your vote. I also thank you for being here, for being involved, and for caring enough about the township to come out. Thank you. 
look, the mayor is, is, uh, is, is trying to portray me as, as a Republican. I'm not a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I've always been a Democrat. I blogged about Chris Christie because we went to the same high school saying I'm proud that someone from my high school became governor. I wasn't proud of the job that he's doing. I just want to keep everything in perspective. Regarding Fox News, I am the only person you know who quit their job over Fox News. So keep that in mind, too, as well. Okay. But, Bottom line is, since decided to run for Maplewood Township Committee, more than a few people have asked me, can you really work with Victor Luca so we both of you are elected? My answer to them and my answer to you is yes, not no. I can, I will work tirelessly to make Maplewood the best it can be. If Vic and I butt heads, so be it. In the end, people who are committed to doing the right thing more often than not do the right thing. Now, of course, I don't come with a rubber stamp, as I said earlier. I will not compromise on an agenda that makes no sense because I'm not here to serve me. I'm here to serve Maplewood. Yes, I want more transparency from our local government, and perhaps that's because I do have a background in journalism. I look for the truth, and once I know the truth, I want everyone to know what I know. When I'm elected, you can come to me for straight answers on issues that concern you and your family, because I'm committed to this town, and I'm committed to you. If we can get something done for you, I'll tell you. If we can't, I'll tell you that too, with a lengthy explanation. In closing, I want to say one more thing. I am not a wealthy man, but I have paid for this campaign out of my own pocket. I did so because I believe it's worth it. I love my community. It's where my neighbors live. It's where some of the most important people in my life live. But I'm not unique in that regard. I believe everyone sitting in this room feels that same way. That's why you came out tonight. You wanted to meet the candidates, learn more about us, and hopefully you did. So again, on June 7th, please vote for me, Lee Nablin, Line C. Thanks again. that a lot of people don't often vote in primaries. And I hope you will tell your neighbors, I know you're all going to vote, but I hope you will tell your neighbors that both Patch and Maywood Online have been here taping this uh, event and that they can look and find out about our candidates. I want to thank the candidates so much because it's not easy to sit up here and speak uh, as you did so wonderfully. And I hope that everyone will take a minute to say something personally to them. We are still selling our one dollar raffle for the old neighbors. I used to sit back there and help yourself to sell refreshments. And if you haven't signed up to give out those light bulbs, please think about doing that. Find the path. Thank you.